Welcome to the week four Q&A in our Study Through the Bible series here on YouTube. And so we are people of the free gift, and we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future content studying through the Bible or any of these weekly Q&As. And if you have questions of your own that you would like to answer about the Bible and or particularly about our study through the Bible, then please put them in the comments down below and I'll be choosing some for next week's Q&A. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. And I want to welcome our new subscriber to YouTube, Modern Day Hysteria. Great name. And uh, so a couple things, one on YouTube, one on Facebook. And this is actually coming from a member of my church. How you doing, Robin? And uh, so she says, I have a hard time understanding fallen angels having relations with human women. Were the angels human-like? And so this comes from Genesis 6. And when it says that the sons of God came unto the daughters of men and they took wives and they gave birth to sons and they, they were called Nephilim, fallen ones. And these were mighty men, giants in the earth and men of renown. And uh, so and it says in these days and days after that. And so I talked about the two different views, and one of them is that this was like the godly line of Seth, and they were given a birth with children uh, with the you know daughters of Cain or whatever, um, the ungodly line. And so that doesn't really fit because you don't have two natural people giving unnatural offspring. And that's exactly what you would have to imply happened if that's in fact the case. Uh, the, the view all through you know church history and it also just representative in all the different cultures is uh, evidence of this phenomenon that's been going on and there's also those who have made connection to things that they see going on in the unidentified flying object world UFO world alien world um, and the messages that are coming from them there's a great book on that called alien encounters written by Chuck Missler and Mark Eastman where they connect some of the dots having to do with the whole abduction scenario and uh, things that happen in that, that realm. But to answer your question in the short version, I would say, yes, uh, angels are different than demons. And the natural assumption is that demons are fallen angels, but that's not the case. Because angels, what we see of them is that it, both of the, the good ones and the bad ones is that there's a difference between those who are able to just embody, uh, embody themselves. And we see angels doing that a number of times, even already in the book of Genesis, in which they come down and they are looking human. And even in the Gospels, when we were talking about that, that we saw that there were angels there, but they were described sometimes as men dressed in white. And so, yes, they can embody themselves, and um, so they would be human-like in that sense, even though they were angels. They would manifest themselves as humans, and they would trick women um, into being able to do things with them uh, and give birth to children with them. And so that's the, that's the short end of the answer to your question. But I also just wanted to point out in Numbers 13, 33, uh, they saw the giants, the sons of Anak, when they went into the promised land. And it said, they said that we were as grasshoppers in their sight and in Deuteronomy 2.20, it says that they um, encountered the Zamzumans, the giants there, their Anakims, and these are specific tribes that God told them to completely wipe out because they were actually the, the same remnant of the Nephilim from the days after the flood. And then Deuteronomy 3.31, Og, king of Bashan, was a remnant of the giants. And that's why it was such a big deal when they defeated him and uh, totally annihilated them. 1 Samuel 17.4, there went out a champion of the Philistines named Goliath. He was the son of Gath, or he was from Gath, and his height was six cubits in the span. Second Samuel twenty one sixteen, 
Eshibbenab, which was of the sons of the giant, and whose the weight of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels of brass in weight. He girded, being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. Okay, New Testament has this to say about this. Second Peter two four says, but if for God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. Now that word hell is Tartarus. It's the only time it's used. And it is um, the place of like the bottomless pit. Okay, so it's equivalent in a lot of language to the uh, bottomless pit in Revelation, the abyss, the abuso. Okay, and you see the angels that are held captive there. Um, and that's exactly what it's referring to. And it says, and deliver them into chains of darkness be to be reserved unto judgment. So there were angels that sinned. Now notice the difference here. These angels that sinned are not just the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer because it says they were bound with chains. They were imprisoned until a certain time and for a certain cause. And so uh, that's not true of what we know of fallen angels or demons. The, those are uh, you know, spirits that seek embodiment. They they try, you know, when they're cast out of one body, they have to go and embody another one. They can't manifest themselves physically in the same way that these angels could. Okay, and so, and they, those angels aren't bound. You know, they're free and they're causing terror, they're causing temptation, they're causing havoc all around the world and with humanity. Okay, and so 2 Peter 2, 5, and he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. So it gives the context for when this is happening in the time of the flood. And, and so bringing the flood upon the whole world of the ungodly, and that was part of the reason, like I said, for God bringing the flood is because of this whole phenomenon with the Nephilim. And then Jude 1, 6, it says, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. And that the, the language is used of us putting on our heavenly dwelling, our heavenly body um, in 2 Corinthians 5. And so you have these angels who left that and uh, they, uh, they were reserved in everlasting chains under darkness under the day, judgment of the great day. Okay, Jude 1, seven. even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. So Sodom and Gomorrah has talked about strange flesh in reference to homosexuality, but the angels that sin, it says in like manner, they went after strange flesh and committed fornication. And going after strange flesh, they're set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So I hope that helps. I know that it's kind of weird if that's the first time that you're hearing it, but it's actually very common theme throughout the Old and the New Testaments. And even a lot of the apocryphal, you know, books that are out there, uh, you know, even elaborate even more. And this was pretty common, uh, common knowledge. Um, if you were to ask the average Jewish person, what's wrong with the world? They would have talked about not just the fall, but they would have talked about the fall, the events leading up to and including the flood and then the Tower of Babel. And all of that is critical to understand the framework of the world in which we now live in. It's post you know, post fall, post flood, plus post Babel. And then thankfully it's post Jesus and his death and resurrection as well. And so now let's go on to YouTube. Um, loving it. People to free gift. Just sub. Keep making these. Thank you so much for the encouragement. I appreciate it. Uh, YouTube, I think we were trying to say, tried to say the same thing. The reason I said he brought the table scraps was because evidence suggested that it was the case. This is talking about the Cain and Abel and why was Cain's offering not accepted. I'm sure that Jehovah, also pronounced Yahweh, would have accepted the offering if it was the best that he had. But even if it was the best, his heart was clearly not in it like you were saying. And uh, so we're in agreement. We're on the same page. We're not saying different things. Um, it, it's a combination. If your heart's not right, the things that you're going to do for God aren't going to be right. You know, like if your heart's not in something, you're going to just kind of half, halfway it. And so it's not going to end up being the, the way that it should be anyway. 
Okay, and so uh, that's our questions uh, from the Bible for this week. Uh, if you have a question or an insight that you want to share, go ahead and do it in the comments down below. I'll be taking some of those for next week's Q&A. And so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, give us a thumbs up on this video if you like the content for today. Share this video with others who are endeavoring to study the Bible. Give them the resources they need and the answers to the questions they have. And let's do it in community here on YouTube. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.